Hey everyone, today we're talking about Fiat, so buckle up, because this is Riding with Rob. Alright guys, so if you are not, uh, I wouldn't say subscribe, but if you're not following us over on Facebook, uh, All Train Outlaws, you're missing out on our live stream videos. So next Monday, we do it every Monday, 8 p.m. Central, so Central Time, so you know, adjust for your time zone, but look, we always have these different discussions, and coming up, we are going to be talking about the Fiat, the future of Fiat. Uh, and the Fiat Chrysler Automotive Group. Now, I wanted to weigh in because we wa I watched, uh, um, and I'm sure Marty watched it, he sent it to me. So, we watched a uh, newscast recently, I, I guess you would say. It's not really a podcast, but it's just like a new segment that they put on YouTube. And um, basically, they were talking about what the future is going to be of Fiat, especially since the U.S. market has moved so largely to trucks and SUVs, while really, really declining in car sales. I mean, to the point of, according to the CNNBC, one of those things, right? Um, they they basically said, we're down to 30% as far as our total sales of cars, and it's, you know, overwhelming, so the rest of that, overwhelmingly, like 7% is trucks and SUVs, which is nuts. It's absolutely insane. I mean, you know, maybe 50-50, 60-40, but but, you know, basically it's 30-70 at this point. And cars like what I'm driving now, my, my Fiat 500, have, have really, really declined in sales. Particularly the Fiat 500 has dropped half in sales. Now, I think there's a couple reasons for this. And obviously the market has a huge, huge thing to do with it. Um, but I also think that Fiat's gotten an unfair shake here in the United States. Look, back in the day, a long time ago, long, long time ago, galaxy far, far away, before I was born... Fiat pulled out of the United States. I've lived in the United States without a Fiat for my entire life. These roads are terrible. I'm trying to find a nice smooth lane and the guys can go slow in front of me. These roads are terrible here. I'm sorry for the uh, shaky camera. But basically, I've never had a never had Fiat. It's never been around. And when I saw the Top Gear episode where Jeremy Clarkson is driving a Fiat 500 apart and talking about just how much fun it is, I have wanted one. I think that they look really, really cool. And to be honest, there's not a whole lot of three-door hatchbacks here in the United States. In fact, I can only think of one that's currently for sale right now other than the Fiat 500, and that's the Mini Cooper. Now, I said the Fiat was getting an unfair shake, and here's why. Because back in the day, before I was born, the Fiat had, was, had a bad reputation, right? You get a bad rep, it's hard to break free of that rep. So when they bring Fiat back to the United States, um, 2014, 2013, somewhere in that range, right? You have this first generation of cars, like any manufacturer does, that have a lot of problems. Why? Because they're the first generation of car for that region, right? Look, you, you can't take the, that first, it doesn't matter if it's a, a Honda Civic or a, a, a Ford F-150 or whatever, Look, it really doesn't. That, that first generation of whatever it is is going to have issues. It's going to have problems. Uh, you take, for instance, the Mitsubishi Lancer. I love the Mitsubishi Lancer. I've seen a lot of really good Mitsubishi Lancers. They're well-built cars and all of that. Ask anyone who bought that very first year Lancer. They were terrible. They broke down all the time. They had all kinds of crazy issues. This one did this, and that one did that, and this one had these kind of issues. Why? Because here in America, we live in a very diverse as far as like weather and terrain and road conditions. So you can't possibly be able to test and build for all these conditions. You can't tell me that you built a car that will last up here in the Midwest where I live in three feet of snow and you know negative 60 degree wind chill, but also performs exactly the same all the way down in Florida where they have 100% humidity and it's 120 degrees outside. It's just not possible, not without actually having had it in the real world and seeing where it fails and then being able to go back and, and fix them. So the Fiat themselves even said, look, we got a bad shake. We, they took a small sample size of our cars. They're, they don't include... So basically, like, their reliability, right, that, that, that reputation was a confirmation bias, meaning that someone already believed that Fiat wasn't very reliable and then found a bunch of bad Fiat cars and ignored all the, all the stuff that is new and outcoming. So we're going to be talking about all of this on Monday and we're going to be, I'm going to be bringing up all kinds of different points. 
Um, the point that I really wanted to drive home here and now is that because of that bad reputation, right? Um, Fiat hasn't gotten a fair shake. They did do an absolutely excellent job in marketing. As you can see, like their first couple of years, their sales were like through the roof. Their marketing was absolutely excellent. Um, when I bought my Fiat, I bought the 500 apart for two reasons. Number one, I knew that because it had a BART badges on it, it was built differently. It was built specially. Somebody who actually cares about building cars built this car versus a massive manufactured assembly line where it's just kind of slapped together. When somebody puts a specialty badge on something, whether it's an STI, RS, an Evolution, uh, on a Barth or an AMG or whatever the case may be, it's going to have that little extra detail, that little extra attention put to it that little bit of extra. Secondly, I also bought the extended warranty from, from Mopar. Because why Why wouldn't you? Look, I drive this car 90 miles round trip a day. That's 450 miles a week for those of you who'd like to do the math, because I do do it five times, a minimum of five times a week. Sometimes it's six times, sometimes it's seven times. But look, the car has never left me stranded. The car has never not started. The... So, have I had some small issues? Yes, absolutely. This is a 2013 model, um, and we have had some small issues. The uh, wheel bearing in the back went out. Come to find out, it was a common problem defected, and uh, Chrysler, Bopa, whoever the, the heck, the, the big automotive, they replaced it for free, no problem. It was covered, totally fine. All righty. Um, other issues I've had with the car. My shift linkage broke. Now, you may be going, well, but please put in your mind that I was driving my same 450 miles a week. It was snowing. We had wind chills of up to negative 65 degrees. It was so cold, the trains weren't moving. And that's all that happened to my car? The little rubber bushing around the around the shift linkage ball joint popped apart. I mean, come on, guys. I, you, you can't you can't possibly blame that uh, on on the build quality of the car. And when I when I bought the car, of course, I'm going to go through and go, okay, you know what? It's got a bad reputation. I'm gonna, I want to read about it, right? I need I need all the information I can get from the consumer reports. And as I'm reading through the consumer reports, I'm looking at people that like reading these things like, what? He did what? This guy claims he was just driving along the highway when his entire transmission suddenly and unexpectedly locked into place and exploded. Boom! You mean you shifted from fifth to first at like 90 miles an hour? Sure. To have an actual transmission just lock solid? That's not even possible. It's not just gonna lock up solid. I'm, to, I'm struggling to find a kit, like in my mind, what could possibly happen inside the train, the whole thing would just lock solid. Because even if, say, let's say a synchro gear burst or something, right? And it put a bunch of metal, the transmission, you're driving down the highway, it, it's gonna chew those parts up. It's not gonna lock the transmission out. Uh, I was talking, uh, I read another one where a guy said that he bent the frame. <laughs> what? You bent the frame. Where he said the frame bent. That his car was riding funny because he hit a couple of small, insignificant potholes. And he took it to Fiat and they had to replace his whole car because the frame bent. Like, are you serious right now? Bro, you bent the frame, and those weren't insignificant potholes. Trust me, I know. I live in the Midwest. Our roads are shit. They are just shit. I have hit some major potholes, some massive potholes, some stuff that shook my spine and rattled my brain where I pulled over and said, there's no way I didn't break a rim, pop a tire, blow out the valve stem, something. I broke something. Had to have. And I haven't. 
not the, not the lower control arms, not the bushings, not the sway bar links, none of it. But I've hit some major pot, I mean seriously major potholes. I'm not talking like a little bump, I'm talking like good news, and the whole car goes down into the one side, way back up, and you are fighting to stay on the road like some major potholes, dude. Seriously. Anyone drives Interstate 55, you know what I'm talking about. There are some major potholes out here. So to say that you, the frame bent on you for some insignificant potholes, and then admitting that he lives in New York, which, come on, man, you guys get just as much snow and salt all over your roads, and you have the plow trucks scraping the dirt. you've got some major potholes out there too, dude. You hit something hard, real hard, okay? So look, it's my opinion that Fiat got a unfair shake. Firstly, because when they came back to the United States, immediately we started going, well, fix it again, Tony, <laughs> because it's a Fiat, it's unreliable. It's like, really? You're not even going to give him a chance? And then this guy says, oh, my wheel bearings went out. Oh, it's unreliable. Look, as far as like engine and transmission goes, not a single issue. Not one. Change the oil. I replaced my air filter. Drives perfectly fine. I will say this: it is a bit picky about the weather that it's in. When it was negative 60 out, I had a hard time getting the car to warm up. It's a 1.4 liter. It's negative 60 degrees. I'm driving at the speed limits between 55 and 70 include the other interstate that I go on, but on the main instance, 55 to 65 miles per hour, yeah, it's going to have an issue heating up. It's a small engine. It's really, really cold outside. And then in the, in the heat, sometimes I'll get a long crank, especially when it's humid, especially when it's humid. And it's not like I'm sitting here, no, it's, you know, if you extra cranks than it normally would and it fires up and it's okay. It's a little bit picky, but you know what? The computer system is very, very sophisticated. You can definitely tell the difference between what kind of gas you put into it, let alone the temperature outside. So look, if you want to join in on this conversation, you want to make some comments, you've got some thoughts, you've got some theories, head on over to Facebook. Join the All Terrain Outlaws Facebook page. And I know a lot of you guys are like, well, All Terrain is like a truck thing right now. Listen, all terrain as one word, yes, would be a truck thing. All terrain, as in two words, is all of the terrains, all of them, all the things, right? It's a great car community for people that love cars, trucks, motorcycles. If it's got an engine and it goes forward and you're into it, so are we. If you like to work on your stuff, you like to do it yourself, you like to modify, all that because so are we you're passionate about a certain type of brand or whatever, we're, we're all there and it's a great community for people that just respect other people's projects and other people's passions. So if, if that sounds like the kind of group for you, and I know that it is, you should head on over where we'll be having this discussion live Monday nights, 8 p.m. Central. And uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about the future of Chrysler and I've got a whole lot more to say about Fiat because I'm very passionate and all the people that have owned Fiat's are also very, like, especially the 500 owners, very passionate people. They love their cars. I love my car. And there's nothing to not love about it. So trust me when I tell you I got a lot more to say about this subject and that you should be joining us live. We read off your comments. We, we really enjoy interacting with you guys. Um, sometimes we have, uh, you know, last week we had a, a special guest drop by out of nowhere, so that was tons of fun. So uh, head on over there. And then also on Instagram, you can follow All Train Outlaws, follow me, at Riding with Rob. And um, go over to the YouTube. I'm not sure which platform you're watching this on right now, but head over to YouTube. Uh, All Terrain Outlaws over on YouTube. I've got a lot of videos over there as well. Um, Marty's got a video over there um, for you to check out if you're more curious about what exactly All Terrain Outlaws is and how it got started and all that. Um, so anyway, guys, until next time, make sure you enjoy your drive.